Hello everyone, I'm Ryan Rad from Northeastern University and today I'm excited to share with you our most recent work where we focus on accurate classification of land cover from multispectral satellite imagery. This is a key factor in understanding the changing landscapes and environmental processes. This is an area where traditional methods face difficulty in capturing complex spatial spectral relationships. So let's begin with some background and motivation for this study. Climate change is a reality that's reshaping our planet, affecting where we live, the animals around us, and our weather patterns. A big challenge we are seeing more often is wildfire, which are happening more frequently and fiercely, especially in places like North America. Our first step in fighting climate change is to understand these changes properly. That's where land cover classification comes in, and we aim to make land cover classification better and more accurate for everyone. With this knowledge, we can better understand climate change impact and work towards solutions to protect our planet more effectively. In the field of remote sensing, satellite imagery plays a vital role in monitoring various atmospheric and environmental parameters. The satellite images come with trade-offs in terms of spectral, spatial, and temporal resolution. In this work, we specifically focus on multispectral satellite imagery such as Landsat 8 and Copernicus S5P with a special resolution of 30 meters. This kind of data captures a wide range of spectral information, providing a comprehensive view of the Earth's surface that helps us gather valuable insight into the characteristics of the land. A total number of 1 million patches of size 256 by 256, each covering an area as large as 7,680 by 7,680 meters from selected countries were extracted for training. The following 15 bands were obtained from Google Earth and Gene. Our criteria in selecting these bands aim to maximize diversity of spectral information while mitigating the multicollinearity issues. Together, these bands provide us with critical information on how our planet's landscape is changing. As we know, CNN-based models have limitations. They struggle to capture long-range dependencies and understand the complex spatial relationship present in multispectral data which is crucial for, for accurate land cover classification. To overcome these challenges and limitations, we explore uh, vision transformers, specifically SWIN transformer. SWIN transformer is a powerful architecture initially developed for computer vision tasks. It excels in capturing global dependencies and long-range interactions in images making it suitable for a variety of vision tasks, including image recognition or segmentation. Swin Transformer is characterized by its patch-based processing, hierarchical representation learning, and the use of shifted window self-attention mechanism. It has been proven effective in handling multimodal data that has potential to enhance um, our prediction. In this work, we are proposing subpixel vision transformer inspired by swing transformer. Our approach also introduces a spectral attention mechanism to enhance the model's capability in handling multi multispectral data. This proposed architecture is tailored to handle data sets of limited size and is um, adept at performing reliable land cover identification across 44 different classes. The two key components here that are different from, Swain, from the original Swain transformers include, first, a spectral attention mechanism is introduced to enhance the model's ability to learn from multispectral images. Second, the shifted window partitioning used in the original Swain transformer is replaced with subpixel partitioning, which will be explained in the next. Um, this mechanism differs from traditional multi-head self-attention as we utilize subpixel shuffling window-based self-attention. This approach allows for more precise alignment of patches, reducing information loss, enhancing the capture of local and global context within the image. It enables the model to effectively attend to spatially distant, 
but semantically related patches, thus incorporating long-range dependencies and global contexts. This innovative approach is integral to our model's ability to accurately capture and analyze complex spatial patterns and spectral relationship present in multispectral imagery. Now let's examine the quantitative result of our model in land cover classification. To assess our approach performance, we used evaluation metrics such as DIAS score or F1, which provides insight into the model's accuracy and captures both um, type 1 and type 2 errors. We compare our subpixel transformer model against several established existing models. Additionally, we examined the performance versus training compute required for different models. This analysis revealed that our subpixel transformer not only achieves uh, higher accuracy, but also does that uh, with, a, with a favorable performance compute trade-off, highlighting the efficiency of, of, of the component we introduced in this model. Now let's visually compare the land uh, cover maps produced by our subpixel transformer model with the Grand Truce data um, in various European countries. The comparison illustrates the model's effectiveness in accurately um, identifying land cover areas with, um, with each map highlighting the precise and detailed classification achieved by our model. Um, the dark pixels um, here representing the error produced by, by each of the two models that are used for visual comparison. In conclusion, our model stands out in terms of accuracy and efficiency, particularly modeling complex spatial pattern and spectral relationship within limited training samples. While we have focused on land cover classification for climate change modeling, the potential application of this, tech, this strategy are vast. Uh, future work will explore extending this approach to other remote sensing tasks with, um, with varying characteristics. We are also interested in uh, investigating techniques for unsupervised and weakly supervised uh, learning using vision transformers. And that's all I had for this presentation. Thank you very much for your attention and for listening.